What's up, everyone? This is Celestina, and that's Miko. Hi. And this is Hardcore. Obviously, you probably knew that from the intro where Miko was all like, dunk, 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 hardcore. But in case you didn't, we are here for another riveting episode of Hardcore, the human design podcast. And this week's topic is inspired by a journey Miko took as of late to a different country to watch a swim meet and had the inspiration to talk about athletes today. So do you want to give us a little bit of insight on that, about that? Yes. So last week there were the World Aquatics Championships that were held in Qatar. And my partner swims for, or is part of the the people that are competing in this competition. And I found it super inspiring to just watch many different age groups so it goes up to 100 there was even apparently someone that is over 100 but all of these people are competing some are competing in teams others are competing as individuals and i find found that whole energy super inspiring to the point where i'm even considering to start swimming again <laughs> i'm still considering it <laughs> which uh, leads to the next challenge that here in saudi arabia women can't really use pools much yet so finding a competition pool here in saudi arabia is going to be a challenge let, let a bathing suit <laughs> so Don't they have like see. swimsuit burqa situations yeah probably but even that i wouldn't know where to find that but that's yeah, fair I, I, I think even accessing the pool would be a challenge. So I don't even know if they have changing rooms for women here. But yeah, it's definitely something I think I would like to get back into. And while watching everyone, of course, I have to go to human design and think about, okay, how, how are they designed? <laughs> how is this working? So yeah, this is how we came to the idea, or I came to the idea to, <laughs> to ask Celestina if we could do an episode on exercising and sports and how that is connected in human design. And I said yes, because my mental capacity this week is nil. So I'm really excited <laughs> for this. However, even though my mental capacity is nil, I feel like I was a bit more prepared than you were today, which is hilarious. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Which I was fascinated about and very proud. I think because we had this conversation like at midnight your time at like 8 a.m. my time, literally last night this morning. And I was like, hmm. She hasn't responded back because she's asleep. So one of us needs to like at least have somewhat, somewhat have their shit together for this episode. So I was like, okay, heart is in it. Let's prepare. I feel like that's, that's what went down. I love it. Thank you for <laughs> catching me. Cool. So we definitely took different approaches with who we researched for this, but I'm actually kind of excited about that. Yes, for sure. And uh, like the first thing I would like to get into is just where one would look for some insights regarding what exercises are correct for you. And of course, again, we always say that, but it's very important to take your whole chart into consideration. We're going to go into elements of the chart. Um, they can provide you with some information, but to really understand the full picture and what is right for you, you would have to look at the entire chart. So there are several different approaches that you can take here, which is one, look at the motor centers. So that would be the root, the sacral, the emotional solar plexus, and the ego center. The next one is to look at your arrows in the physical aspect of your human design body graph, which is the red side, the unconscious side. And those are the variables. Then you would also be able to look at your incarnation cross. So where is your incarnation crosses sun located um, because that is going to share a lot about so for example if it's in the quarter of form that would point to you being very prone to physical movements in your life um, another area to look at are of course the gates which gates are connected which are gates are defined is that Luna? Oh my God, Celestina just showed Luna in the picture. <laughs> if you wanna watch, she's got a beautiful, cute dog. And then we have the connection of the sacral and the spleen. So that is going to be a very important aspect as well. 
of how and what the ideal environment looks like for you to exercise in. So these are just a few elements. And I would like to pass the mic to Celestina regarding the centers and how they would affect you in your exercise routine. Dude, I didn't know any of that. So that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, but you know how the motor centers work. So <laughs> yeah, I do yeah. know how the motor centers work, but that was a really cool insight that I didn't know. So we're always learning here, guys. Um, so what what I think comes quickly to me is being a generator type, right? Like probably more apt to have the need to do something physical on a regular basis, right? So having the sacral defined, probably having a need to do that. So that's kind of what I'm grasping at here. And then I would also assume, since you mentioned these three, the emotional wave, right? So looking at the emotional solar plexus to see if do I have the desire to do this? Do I have this wave of, of energy that I need to like push forward through? And maybe sometimes that comes across as physical. Maybe sometimes it's action in different ways. And then I also would assume the ego center, but that's probably more of like the will to do something or the will to push through something. And I can tell you that's not sustainable. So <laughs> I would love more insights here. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> the will center is fickle. Um, so I don't think we have control over that at all, but however, all of those motor centers, they have a specific way to gain the energy from them. So the emotional solar plexus needs to feel an emotional pull towards something. So it really needs to have their, their emotions into it. They really want to be doing it. The ego center is really about will. I will do that because my heart is in it. The sacral needs to find something that satisfies them, that makes them feel satisfied. And that's the place that they're going to be able to bring up most energy. And the root is about this adrenaline push. So depending on which of these motor centers you have defined, you're going to have a very different way to, to use that energy depending also on the sport that you're doing. So with a root center defined, connected to the sacral, for example, through one of the format channels, this can be a lot of adrenalized energy. So it's a very quick push or something that, that, get, that gets your adrenaline rising. And then it can be sustained for quite some time if it is something that satisfies you. So we see this connection a lot, like the root is often defined in extreme sports. It doesn't have to be that you're going to be someone that goes into extreme sports, but it could be one indication of why you're so interested in it. If your root is connected to the sacral or if your root in general is defined, it doesn't even have to be connected to the sacral. And that's also another thing, the type can show you some indications regarding sports, but it doesn't have to be the only way to, to tell you, okay, this is the sports direction you should go into or not. We're going to show you an example of this later on, Serena Williams. She really jumps out of the box entirely because she's a mental projector. So very, very, very open chart, but Therefore, she's taking in the energies of other people and amplifying them. Individuals like that just need to be extremely careful that it doesn't lead to burnout. And that's kind of, depending on which motor center is defined in you, you will have to find ways to really use that energy wisely without overstepping. So as Celestina already mentioned, the ego or the heart, it is not sustainable. It is... It may have energy for a certain amount of time, but it is not something that can go every single day, pushing, pushing, pushing for several hours on end. It will need a break at some point. It will need a resting phase. It could be you have this energy for two, three, four weeks, but then you need a break. Yeah, I don't think I could train for a marathon unless it was something that I really, really wanted. Yeah, I think... Uh... I think so as well. I would also need my heart to be fully in it. And even then, it's still 
to keep this consistent desire up and running, it's difficult. And I think it's, um, it's also not correct for us. So even to bring out um, an episode every single week for us, it's not necessarily the right way to do it. We're doing it because this is what the algorithm needs and would like to have. But the better way for us to go about it would be to record many episodes one after another when both of our hearts are in it and then to release them bit by bit every week because this is kind of how our energy works. It is just we can focus on something for some time, but we can't have it go on and on and on and on. I know this episode is about sports, but because you said that specifically about podcasts, I did that. I think it was a podcast ago. So I've had like five podcast guys, but I did that a podcast ago for the first two seasons. Dude, game changer. So like batch recording and then like extending it out for like five or six months. Oh, that really is the way to do it, man. As as an ego to ego out there. Woo. Yeah. So the other thing that when it comes to exercise again we're talking about the motor centers and that is one aspect the other aspect that we mentioned at the beginning was the variables so if you look at your unconscious arrows so the red arrows in your chart if they're pointing to the left or pointing to the right it's going to have a different dynamic and especially if you're looking at the top left arrow which is going to provide you with information regarding your PHS, your physical health system. If it's pointing to the left, you're going to have a very active body. So that means that exercising or moving is very important to you. Of course, then it depends how many motors are defined, what kind of type you are, etc., etc. But in general, your body wants to be moved and it needs this movement. So you may be someone when they're, they have a target, they get moving, they get up, they go, and it's hard to stop them. So it's really just a very active form of movement. And you also have an active digestion. So that means that you physically digest food actively and faster than someone with a right arrow. And you need a more consistent flow of food. So it needs to be more regulated. In this form, it also is not only connected to your physical food digestion, but also the way that you digest information. So regarding the right arrow, would you like to share something about that? Girl, you are throwing me here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I messaged you. I was like, you're going to take lead on this episode, Boobal okay, Kitten. Okay, okay. I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I thought you could say, <laughs> I thought you had this one. Okay. I will, I will keep going. <laughs> I did the research. I didn't, I, <sighs> your projector no, no, mind no. is totally different than my manifestory <laughs> mind right here. <laughs> okay. I will, I will keep going. I don't want to leave you out, but okay, we will get to the charts in a little bit. <laughs> I'm here for comments and quips in this episode, and I'm keeping okay, all cool. of this in. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> the right arrow, on the other hand, is going to be more laid back in its approach. The top left arrow pointing to the right. Let's be very clear about that. So we're still talking about the same PHS uh, arrow. When it's pointing to the right, it has a slower digestion in type of information and food. And it also needs less exercise. Again, it depends on how many motors are defined. So you can be a very, very active individual with a right facing arrow because of if you have four motors defined, this is not going to apply to you as much as if you have no motors defined. So always take the whole chart into consideration. And the thing is that we're being super conditioned about our environment that we always have to be on the go, 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 go. So this is a heavy conditioning that we have to try to work through. So don't feel bad if you don't have the energy to consistently and continuously be on the go. 
it may not be for you. However, you always have to differentiate and try to understand yourself better. Why are you exercising or why are you not exercising? Is there any kind of mental block that you're creating or is it actually in your best interest to just be more calm and be more relaxed in your exercising approach? So this is the challenge with human design. We have the chart in front of us, we can see a few things, but we also always have to understand the, the lifestyle, how a person was raised, what they've been through, etc. because that's how it's all, all going to come together. When it comes to the lower arrow, so top left, bottom left, arrow that is about your environment so if this is pointing to the left you are energized by an active environment so you are someone that also needs to be surrounded by activity by movement and this is going to stimulate you so either if you take these two arrows together either an active environment is going to stimulate you to sit back and relax or an active and and that is when your top right top left arrow is pointing to the right or if your bottom left arrow is pointing to the left that means that your environment your active environment is going to motivate you to be active if your top left arrow is pointing to the left. So this is a bit confusing, but basically the bottom left arrow is going to show you the ideal environment, whether it should be if it's left facing, if you should be surrounded and in an active environment, or if it's right facing, if it, the environment should be more slow and relaxed. So this is the variables. The next part that I would always recommend to look at when we are talking about exercising is your spleen and your sacral. Are these two things connected? Directly connected? <laughs> because the spleen is our health system and basically what we're doing, whether it's defined or not, we're accumulating things in this center. So all of that needs to be released. And if you have a defined spleen and a defined sacral, and they are connected, that means that you can directly while exercising, you're basically cleansing your spleen, you're cleansing your immune system. So it's really like a washing machine. <laughs> And this is great for someone who loves to exercise by themselves. Um, you could potentially get up in the morning, just exercise in your room without having anyone around, and this would still be healthy for you. It's of course, when it comes to exercise, it's also super important regarding your type. How are you entering the exercise? So if you're a generator, you still need something to respond to, to exercise. If you're a projector, you need to be invited into exercising. So as a projector, the first time you start a sport, make sure that you've been invited into the sport and then listen to your inner authority to see if this is the correct sport for you or not. This again depends on your type, but regarding the spleen and the sacral connection, if it is directly connected, you can be all by yourself while exercising because you're cleansing yourself by exercising. If it is not connected and if you have an open or undefined spleen, open or undefined sacral, you will need other people around you to get the full benefit of exercising, of cleansing yourself. And it is just this, this knowledge alone is super powerful because you will already understand what kind of environment is correct for you. I just had a conversation with one of the swimmers and they were saying, I can't exercise by myself in my home. I need to go to a gym. I want to go to a gym. Yeah. Celestina is saying, yeah, she's pointing to herself. Yes. That's really cool. So 
guys, I always bring my husband back into this just because I like look at our charts together because he's the human that I'm around the most. And homeboy hates the gym, but he has the, what is it? 50, 27, 50, 37. What is that? Yeah. 50, 27. And I'm just like, oh my God. Yeah. He's just cleansing himself when he's working out. Just, just a cleanse. And it like comes in waves, which is really interesting. He's like, I just feel a little bloated and like, I just want some abs. So response does a crazy ab workout or we'll do like five crazy ab workouts. I'm like, okay, boo boo kitten. But when it comes to like environmental arrows, it's literally the opposite of me. So he has the top left pointing right and then the bottom left pointing left. So it's very interesting now that you're saying this to see that. But obviously we're here to talk about professional athletes and not my casual athletic husband. But I just thought that was very interesting because it's so different from me. Like I need a gym. I need a coffee shop. I need to be around people to get anything done in my world. So very cool. I totally agree with you. I mean, me too. I I thrive in a gym environment. And this is something that, of course, us non-sacral beings, um, we need to be a bit more careful about, or especially if you have no mo motors at all, to, again, use that energy wisely. It is not our energy. Be aware of that. So even when we're going to the gym, yes, that's great. But as I said, use your strategy to enter these situations and um, choose the sport according to your strategy and your inner authority. This is, it always, always goes back to that. How you enter into anything, that is going to make the difference. The other part is, so just a tiny little hack here. If you have the channel 2838, by any chance, exercise with music. This is going to give you a whole different dynamic you're probably already doing it honestly because people with that channel usually they need music they want music it energizes them it moves them so it's this adrenalized push towards the spleen area and uh, yes basically if your spleen and your sacral is not connected make sure to surround yourself with others because someone just like Celestina loves working at a cafe because she gets that energy from others to finish her projects. This is the same with going to the gym. They just provide you with the energy or the connection that you need or that you may lack between your spleen and your sacral to really cleanse yourself properly. The next part I would like to mention here is the penta channels. Celestina is nodding her head wildly. <laughs> I think it's so funny that I'm muted right now because you're just doing a fantastic job and you're just narrating what I'm doing for the podcast. How does that feel to narrate a manifester's life? <laughs> so strange. <laughs> to have a manifester be muted is also very strange, even though she's actually in the mood to talk. It's not like she isn't. Yeah. So You're doing a great job, Boo Boo. Keep going. Uh, thank you. Thank you. It's your turn soon. Wait for it. <laughs> Okay, so the penta channels are the channels that are pointing from the sacral up to the G center. So those three channels, 15.5, 14.2, 29.46, and the channels pointing from the G center up to the throat, which is 7.31, 8.1, 33.13. The more channels you have defined or the more gates you have defined within these channels, the more you will be desired in team sports because you're providing some form of energy, some form of element that a team needs. So just take a look at your chart, take a look at your children's chart and see how many channels or gates are defined there. and. If there is nothing there, you're not very likely to be a team sports person. Your sport may be more connected to individual sports like, for example, swimming or tennis or what else is there? Golf, for Mountain example. Mountain climbing? Mountain climbing. <laughs> yes, very good. <laughs> We're going to be talking about that one. 
So there is one channel, the 731, which I would say falls kind of out of place regarding this statement because this the 731 is very much linked to being able to lead yourself. So yes, it is a wonderful element that a team also needs. Every team needs, needs a leader. But we will take a look at one athlete, one extreme sport athlete that has this channel. And to me, it makes a lot of sense that he has that because he's really leading himself. But yeah, I think regarding sports, you now have a better overview and a better picture of what can help or, or what you may need to follow or just areas you can look at in your chart to be able to understand which sport may fit best for you. And to go a bit deeper into that, we're going to be showing you a few examples. Caveat, we can go a lot deeper into all of these, but we are going to do our best to keep it as high level as possible and not go down the rabbit hole, right? Yes, yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> She's looking at me and I didn't look right. at the asteroids. <laughs> Even though I was so tempted with Arnold Schwarzenegger, I was like, oh my God, I really want to know his asteroids. Do that on your own time, boo. I... So does anyone you know? want to know more about the asteroids from Arnold Schwarzenegger? Then please leave a comment in the description below. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Invite me. <laughs> okay, so... Celestina, it's your turn. Michael Jordan. Okay, so I chose this one. You chose some really obscure people. I mean, semi-obscure people. I literally Googled best athlete in the world. Guess who came up? MJ. Homeboy MJ came up. Not even on like just best NBA player ever. Best athlete in the entire freaking world. You know? So that's where we're starting today. He is a 4-6 emotional manifesting generator. So I feel like from a profile perspective, needs community. Cool, cool, cool. Role model, 100%. And then we go deeper into his chart based off of everything Miko just taught us. And I say us because I just learned a shit ton from you. So if you look at his, um, his determination, so like we're, again, on the design side, he is, they're both facing left. And what did we learn from that? An active environment, right? And then I don't remember the second one. What's the, what's the other one? <laughs> your, your body wants to be active. So the top there one is the, your body wants to be active. And the second is you need an active environment to be active. And that makes sense when you are doing in a, a sport like basketball, right? Where the sprints are hardcore. There is a game almost every day and the intensity of the sport is pretty physically demanding. The next piece is his identity center or his G center is lit up. He has full channels from seven to 31, one to eight and 1333, which are all related to bringing people in that direction. And I'm pretty sure I could be really wrong, guys. I know very little personally about MJ other than he's just a basketball star, but I'm pretty sure he like was team captain potentially for the Chicago Bulls. I could be wrong. Nonetheless, whether he was official team captain or not, he definitely was a leader and people saw that in him. And I think my understanding of the 731 is people have to see that in you, right? Like you can't just embrace it and just be it but you have to be invited exactly and i'm sure he was because he's fucking great those are the big points that i see there and obviously as a manifesting generator he has a defined root and he has or not sorry he has a defined sacral and he also happens to have a defined root so he's got this consistent energy himself to be able to do this and lead this team or lead his team in that way so I thought this was kind of cool. He also has a completely open spleen, which is interesting because of the, what is it? The 5027 that you mentioned, right? So seemingly he does need a team to kind of complete this sport, even though he does have a couple of individual channels as well. Anything you want to add to this? Cause you're significantly more knowledgeable about all of this since I just learned it moments ago. 
the 5027 and also it can be connected through the 5734 so those are the two ways that your spleen can be connected to your sacral and yes he is completely open in it in in this area except for the 38 pointing to the 28 which I'm pretty sure that music still played a big part in him. So even if you have one part of the channel, you're often looking for the other side of the channel, especially if you have a completely open center and that is the only thing pointing there. So his attraction to the 28 is probably very high. What immediately stands out to me is the amount of Penta channels that are defined in his chart. It is insane. He can pretty much build an a whole team on his own <laughs> like he must have been you know those games when you're in school and you get chosen for who should play on your team i'm sure oh, he, he was, was always first. one yeah <laughs> he was picked first in gym class let's be real <laughs> yes. i can't imagine it any other way no this is really crazy and he has this adrenalized emotions um so for him yeah his his emotions were all in the game i'm sure he didn't just do this because he had to but he was emotional about it as well so fascinating chart and as we said at the beginning we're only going to do top level so i'm holding you me to it <laughs> accountability buddy i got you <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> all right swipe to the next one <laughs> i'm gonna let you lead it Okay, then I'm going to start with Reinhold Messner. Reinhold Messner is someone that is very well known in the mountain climbing community. So he was someone that climbed all the top mountains in the world and he did it without oxygen. So this is something that was very impressive to me. And what I also found interesting is this um, 31 7 channel that we pointed out earlier the leader so he has this defined unconsciously as well so just like michael jordan which again points to the physical body element so everything that's unconscious in your chart is pointing towards your physical body more than it is pointing towards your your personality basically he is a manifester so this is also an interesting part as we have shared before we talked about generators and manifesting generators and most of the time athletes are generators and manifesting generators just because they have this consistent energy flow if you are a sprint person so if you have very short time frames they are often also individuals who are different types. But as you can see, your type is not necessarily always linked to what you're going to do as a sport. So he is a manifester and climbing a mountain takes a lot of energy. It's not something that you just do in a sprint. You need time to climb a mountain, to climb the highest mountains in the world. It's not just a small mountain, it's the highest mountains. So I found that very interesting. He wrote many, many, many books, and this comes from the 1156 channel as well. So this is the one from the Ajna to the throat or vice versa. He had these downloads from within the 6124. Um, and he doesn't have the sacral, so that is completely open, and he doesn't have the root defined so the root is undefined with two gates and the sacral is completely open. So what could have happened here is actually that we're looking at some conditioning as well of not knowing when enough is enough. So the undefined or open sacral in this case doesn't necessarily always know when enough is enough. And the undefined ego is also maybe a strong need to prove yourself. So if you have an undefined ego, you're more likely to not feel good enough and trying to prove yourself through some way, shape or form. He also has the channel 3635, which is all about new experiences. And it's less about 
repeating the same experience over and over again, which is why he climbed so many different mountains, I'm assuming, and not always the same one. But it's really about been there, done that, next. So always wanting to go higher and further and more. So that is just a little overview of Reinhold Messner, even though you may not know him. I wonder how much of what he did was also in search of peace, right? Like being a manifester, feeling peaceful on the mountain. Because I know for me, snowboarding is just like when I can like look out and just see nothing but mountains, I'm also wide valleys. So <laughs> take with that what you will. <laughs> He, he is, is as too. Well. Yeah, yeah, which I found super fascinating. Yeah, because I actually assumed that he was, uh, or I was like, okay, maybe look, see valleys, mountains. Yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah. I actually assumed that he may be a mountain person yeah. because he's he did all of this without oxygen. Mm. But yeah, he's a wide valley. So I'm sure that also having this wide view of things and like yeah. this perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Because just being, having a little bit of what he's got, right? Like, so understanding the two, needing that alone time, seeing like trying to achieve peace in some way. I feel like, yes, it was probably external pressure, like from him in some regard, but also he probably felt some form of peace to be able to keep doing it and keep searching for it. You know what I mean? Because there are moments where I'm just like, wow, if I just stop right now, this is friggin' amazing, you know? So I wonder how much of that was his seeking peace. So freaking cool. A lot of it, actually, because he's got the right angle cross of Eden as well. So he's trying to find heaven on earth as well, or he managed to probably also find heaven on earth the way that you've just described it being in the mountains and finding your peace i think that was a big part of it as well yeah so cool man okay swipe <laughs> michael phelps okay i probably know as much about him as i did about michael jordan other than like occasionally watching the olympics and knowing that he got kicked out for smoking weed but <laughs> after <laughs> but after like having again these insights from you i think it's very interesting so he's a 5-2 sacral generator he's also a quad right which i think is very interesting and i'm pretty sure he won golds in both team and like single person like freestyly race things so there's kind of this air miko's like yeah bro i don't know that face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure when you're on a swim team, though, you like win in like tag team races and also individual races. I'm pretty sure that's that's it. And I'm pretty sure he's won in both. So if we're wrong, call us out. Just don't cancel us, but call us <laughs> out. But his chart's very interesting because he needs both a passive environment and passive activity, right? That's my understanding of the quad rightiness so it's really interesting to see the difference between that and the other two athletes at this point right like i'm just seeing i'm looking at michael jordan's chart as well so it's really interesting just seeing that juxtaposed mm, my favorite sat word <laughs> and less i would say less um there's less action in his G center. He does have one, two, three, four. He does have four gates coming out of his G center and one individual channel coming from the sacral to the, so the 14 two coming from the sacral to the G center, right? But that's still an individual channel, which makes so much more sense being an individual sport more so swimming being an individual sport more so than a team sport like basketball where you need a leader on the court like michael jordan or other team sports <laughs> <laughs> so good but yeah <laughs> i think this is just a very different chart and i think all three of these examples thus far show you that there's no one model to be an athlete, right? There are different strengths that people have that can be really valuable in different sports. So that's like 
very high level of what I took away from this. Also, he is a completely open emotional center, which I think is really interesting. I wonder if there was pressure there as well to achieve. Maybe there was, and he also, he also has a completely open head center. So very interesting. So I, I'm sure you're right regarding the, the swimming, at least what I've seen during the last week, <laughs> that usually you're swimming your own competitions and then you also have team competitions. I'm sure that there are also people that are just sticking to team elements. So rallies and medleys. Um, so those are either you're swimming the same stroke together or you're swimming different strokes, each one of you in the team. And what I can see here is actually, I'm sure that while he was swimming, he was receiving a lot of, so for him, it was probably a form of meditation because his head is entirely open, um, except for the 24 pointing towards the 61. But that means that he probably received quite a few insights from himself, but also from source, I'm assuming. And it was most likely a form of meditation for him. The other thing that I'm seeing is the gate five and gate 15. They often also play a role in, in sports. The gate five is more about while there is chaos around you, you're still finding your own rhythm and you're still finding your own kind of peace of mind. So to me, swimming can be very meditative, very slow and calming. So even though both arrows are pointing to the right for him, I still feel like swimming makes sense in some way because it's when you're not competing, it's still a calm and soothing and relaxing environment. Of course, the training is super hard. Don't get me wrong. I completely get it. <laughs> I mean, I've witnessed it for the last week. So yes, I know what it's, it looks like. Um, but also he has the 52-9 channel, which is again connected to serenity, solitude, mountains have a lot to do like the, the, the hexagram is mount is a mountain. So it's very peaceful and calm. And I think the combination of all of that, he also has the 14 two, which is about having the drive. So you are the driver, you know the direction in your life that you want to go to, which is also very handy when you're swimming, of course. But yeah, all of these things. And he also has the undefined ego with three gates coming out, three unconscious gates coming out. And the one that I find particularly interesting is the 51. So to me, this gate, he's got it in his Mercury and his Venus. Venus, so for him, it's uh, about his values. 51 two. For me, this also, again, it can be looking for the other side and it can be this push of, I need to prove myself. I need to be number one. I need to be the best. And I would assume he managed. <laughs> I mean, he is, he is one of the top swimmers out there. Um, but it's, it's just really interesting to also see what is conditioning and what is truly the right way for me to go about this. And yeah, the, for him, the root gave him the adrenaline for the sacral. It gave him the pressure in the sacral. And that in turn gives him the drive, the direction to who he really is, like his G center, which direction should I be going to? He also has the, the gate of self-love. The gate 10 defined, so it's it's a fascinating combination overall. I like it. Good chart. Last On one. On to the last. <laughs> and the most cryptic one. To me, at least. Because here we have Serena Williams. And, well, she is extremely famous for playing tennis and for winning a lot of championships. I have no idea about tennis at all. I just saw an episode about her. Um, they were comparing her chart to, I think, another boxer's chart. But it's been so long ago that I don't really remember what they were talking about. But what I find super fascinating is that she's so, so, so open. So here you can see a projector. This only centers or the only channel that is defined as the 1156, which is 
connecting her ajna and her throat and it's not even fully consciously defined it is fully unconsciously defined so in her physical body element or in her design it is defined um, but in her consciousness it is undefined so consciously she feels like a reflector um, i can relate it's rough man it, it, yeah <laughs> and then imagine exercising the way that she did i mean she has the top left arrow pointing left and the bottom left arrow pointing right so she is someone that yes she needs to be active in her body but she needs a more calmer environment to be active so no motors she was training with her sister most of the time with venus williams and her father was the driving force, apparently. So I'm wondering what their designs are. I didn't research them, but I would really love to know her father's design because I'm sure, and maybe her sister's design, because I'm sure that she was taking in energies from them while training. And all this pushing, all this drive, I think was, was a really big part in her motivation to become what she has become. I. I don't know if she would have chosen this path by herself. To me, it doesn't necessarily make sense. I've only taken a superficial look at this, so I haven't gone deeply into her design. Yes, she's a 6'3 personality. She's making and breaking bonds. Um, she is someone that really needs to test the limits and she probably went through quite a wild 30s phase, up to 30s phase because it's all about understanding what works and what doesn't work for her. Now she's on the roof. She also stopped tennis, as far as I know. At least there was a Vogue cover of her um, sharing that element that she, was, she stopped tennis. Now she's observing what works and doesn't work for other people. That's kind of mm -hmm. what it means when you're a six line. So I think she just powered through all of these energies within her 30s or before her 30s and uh, now she's decided to to just take it back a notch so I find that that is one of the most puzzling human design charts on the surface so this is really we need to look deeper into the elements to to have more clarity in what exactly happened there I would love to have a conversation with her <laughs> yo Serena if you're out there boo boo we can do a show with you if you really want to. You're being invited into it if you want to chat with me and Miko. So just throwing it out there if you're listening, boo. Yeah, I mean, imagine her childhood. What what, what happened? Like, what what motivated do, her? Do, but if you think about it, maybe she, I mean, being invited into the sport, like you said earlier, right? Being invited into the sport because she's the younger one or the older one? I don't remember. I don't. I, I don't. Guys, we, we literally know nothing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> As I said, I'm not prepared. <laughs> yeah. But okay. So even if she was invited into it by her father, right? She was seemingly naturally good at it. Yeah. Somehow. Okay. Okay. How much of that though do you think is genetics in play? Right? Because her dad was playing. How much of that is just being an athletic human? I don't know. I don't know. In addition and to like what shows up in the design. But then also maybe she saw success early and maybe that was a continuing driving factor because that's pretty important for projectors, right? So Absolutely. I don't, maybe that part's baffling to you like a five line is baffling to me. Yeah, well, I, I, it's baffling because I haven't gone deep into it. And I think in this case, I would definitely also look at the asteroids because I would like to know more about the driving forces and the hanging gates and how they're connected through specific asteroids because it makes such in my opinion it makes such a big difference as well instead of just looking at the traditional human design aspects um yeah and of course yes i would like to know the conditioning forces around her but you're so right um being invited into the sports feeling successful very early on yeah, it does make a big difference. And she's got the cross of healing. So that may have helped her regarding these third line elements before her 30s 
to be able to pull through. Yeah, very interesting. I'm actually really happy that we did this episode. I had hesitations going in, but I think it was a really cool one learning learning for me because I didn't know any of the things that you told me earlier. But it's really cool seeing different athletes charts because I don't think that there is one specific thing that makes you an athlete or a brilliant athlete or a world-class athlete. So that gives us non-world-class athletes hope for just random exercise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it can, it kind of really goes back to strategy and inner authority. As long as you're following that and as long as you're making the decisions coming from that, it is right for you. But you really need to be in tune with your physical body, with your intuition. How is it speaking to you? What is it saying? to be able to make these decisions. And this is also why I thought this was an important episode to make. So I'm happy that you enjoyed it. <laughs> it was but fun. It, it was an important episode because in human design and in the program that I've created, it's always about starting with a physical body. And you as a registered dietitian, you will sign it and put an exclamation mark and... <laughs> and everything to this, how important it is to treat your body right. And we can only learn to understand our intuition if we are learning to observe and treat our bodies right as well. Ooh, with that note, dude, doing a digestion episode might be really cool. Yes. All right, yes. guys, stay tuned for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening, everyone. Ciao. Tschüss. Bye. Bye.